My name is Tony Aursler, and we are at my studio in the Lower East Side of Manhattan. Often when I see people go into a museum, there's this statistic that they look at a painting for 1.5 seconds on average. And of course, with an installation or moving image, you kind of throw that off. But the beauty of it is, is to let it unfold. And the trick of art making, I guess, is to make it a comfortable space or an uncomfortable space, a dynamic space, let's call it that. In the early 90s, I fell upon these uh, very small video projectors, which I had never seen before. They just came onto the market. This was one of these aha moments for me and took it out of the box and started playing with it. And I guess naturally just videoed my, a face and reprojected it onto a small doll, which I had around the studio, a kind of wedding doll about this big with a kind of whited out face. <clears throat> I think I was looking at uh, the Steiner use of dolls where they had these kind of blank faces and kids would read into the face. So I immediately put this small video face onto the doll and saw this, you know, kind of transvestite because it was my face on a, on a woman's body about this big in a wedding gown. And I immediately started shooting scripts and thinking about what these kind of electronic effigies could say or do and what this world was all about because it seemed to me as though this character had one foot in media space and one foot in sculptural space which was very exciting to me. So I began to think about these characters as electronic effigies that were existing between two spaces in a kind of liminal space. Untitled MPD is a very important work for me in that it's the kind of culmination of my interest in uh, multiple personality disorder. There's something about the 25 heads as a matrix. There's a kind of tension between the human quality of the faces and the mathematical lineup in the sculptural element. If you look at the way that people are starting to talk about multiple personality, uh, they use the term channeling and switching channels. So people switch from one person to the next, but there's also a kind of metaphor and an analogy to television channel switching. But I see it as a, as a kind of harbinger for the future, you know, that, that we live in our head, that we spend so much time looking at these screens and that there's this separation which continues into the other works as well. Then we have this notion of people going on the internet and changing their personality or having these images of themselves however they want, you know. The end loop is that actually the reason we go to all these technologies, the reason we sit in front of all these screens and iPads and, and phones and things is that it's part of our evolutionary process to live vicariously through it, but not even vicariously, to, to live actually through that. The challenge for every generation is how to take that technology and use it to activate people's creativity and, and not to have them be pacified, you know. We're doomed otherwise. Mm -hmm.